I've had a very good response from my last video and it's apparent that uh, a lot of people don't really know how to access the information about all the different heat pumps that are available to monitor. So we thought we'd do a short video just showing you how to access the data. So the website is heatpumpmonitor.org and we'll put the details in the notes of this video. But if you plug that in, you will get this list here which shows all the heat pumps in the UK that are using this monitoring software and have agreed to open up their heat pumps to be viewed by the general public. So it actually tells us the coefficient of a performance. You can order it by any of these things here. So for example, if you're looking for a heat pump of a certain size, you can start with the small ones. Okay, you're looking for seven kilowatt heat pump. Well, you can see there's Dakin, Valent, um, and, and others. And then you can basically pick on an individual heat pump. I'll pick one at random here. And if you press the sort of graph button at the end, the dashboard, this blue square will give you data on the installation, things like, you know, whether you're using uh, glycol or have an open system and so forth. And then if you press this button, you will get up-to-date information for this person's heat pump. And then you can use your mouse to select a particular period point in time. And uh, what's the date today? December the 6th. So this is today's data <clears throat> for this person. Um, so you can see a lot of data about their heat pump. You can see the external temperature, the temperature of the heat pump's running out. You can see the cycling of the heat pump. If you go to the detail, you can see the coefficient of performance in this particular window. Um, you can see how many kilowatt hours have been of electricity have been used and from that how much heat has been produced. But the other thing you can do is if you go to this blue square, you can find information on the setup. So what you can see is location, the in installer, the type of heat pump, the refrigerant in the heat pump, and how big my tank is, design flow temperature 40 degrees in my case with a minus two degree external temperature, weather compensation settings, so I've set mine on 0.55. The warmer, the more well insulated the house, the lower that 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 weather compensation curve point would be. But yeah, the size of the house. So I've ticked new radiators and old radiators, antifreeze valves rather than glycol. I've got a number of different zones, they're all in here. Uh, direct hot water temperature is 50 degrees. But I'd encourage people to have a look at this and learn how heat pumps perform. They cost about £500. If you're very interested, I'd recommend it. But if you're if you just want to make sure you've got a good installation, this gives you a chance to research real performance of heat pumps, how they're set up. As I say, if you go to the, the data page, it'll show you how they've been set up. And I think the other thing is if you ever have, A, you'll know what the performance of your system is really, and B, if it starts to fall, then you've got data very, very back good to. debug tools, basically. It shows yeah. you every aspect of what's going on in your system. No matter what you read in the press or anywhere else, yeah you can actually go and look at these performances. That's right. Um, because there have been some incredible figures in the press, haven't there, about how inefficient they are and how costly they are to run. And I mean, there's no doubt in my mind that there's, there's lobby groups either feeding these stories to the journalists or paying them to write certain lines of stories. Mm. They're just so far from the truth, it's ridiculous. And just people need to be aware of it. They need to be aware. And this is independent data with calibrated heat meters. Actually, I'll give one example. Somebody asked me, how much it was frost cycling on the coldest day. So December the 2nd was a very cold day for us. The temperature was down to minus five and a half degrees and the max was only about one degree, I think. So he wanted to know when, how much it was frost cycling. So if you, if I zoomed in on this point. I thought it was worth just taking a second to talk about why heat pumps need defrost cycles. An air source heat pump takes heat out of the surrounding air and puts it into your house. The air has moisture in it and the heat pump blows this air over a radiator. And because the radiator is cool, this air will often defrost or crystallize on the actual radiator itself. The pictures I'm showing you here are of our heat pump which we installed in 2009 in the Cairngorm National Park, which is one of the coldest parts of Britain. The air contains moisture so when it's blown over the cold heat pump radiator 
the water will frost up on the radiator. In order to keep the heat pump radiator clear of this frost, it has a defrost cycle which warms up the radiator and melts the frost. Heat pump cycles are particularly important for the efficient performance of your heat pump. You can see the frost cycling here, so you can get all the information from the monitor. So 0645, it started running, and by 720, it was doing a, a defrost cycle. So in this sort of challenging environment, it was doing it about every 50 minutes, but the defrost cycle only lasted about five minutes, I think. 719 to 724. What's interesting is that by and large the temperatures of the flow and return stay well above the room temperature so they're not taking heat out of the room but if I, if I again zoom in on this you can see room temperature is 18.4, the flow temperature has dropped to 27, the return temperature is 31 so still well above room temperature but the other interesting thing is if I look at the detail of that there's a certain amount of electricity being used here. So I imagine the valent is somehow directly heating the, using electrical power, um, the areas that are freezing up. But it's a very small amount of power, it's 300.3 of a kilowatt hour. Um, and then the thing is back, back operating within five minutes. I, th I think the big thing is it from, if, if you're really interested in going to minute detail, but also it does give an indication of how well the system has been installed. Yeah. And also allows your installer to look at it too. If, they, if they're interested. Yeah, well, anyone they, can look at it, yeah. If they, if they you know, yeah. um, can't come to the property or whatever. Yeah, you could point they, them to this. They can look at it. Yeah. And, and would you, with an installer, expect to ask for some level of coefficient of performance? Just say you, you're not a technical person. Would it be reasonable to say to the installer, right, install a system... I'm looking for a coefficient of performance of over three. three it's a good question. I, th I think their design documentation should state that. Having asked you that question, I then went along and had a look at the documentation provided with my own heat pump, and it's giving the energy for the property, air source heat pump um, manufacturer, the flow temperature at 40 degrees, the SCOP seasonal coefficient of performance for heating is 4.49 and the hot water is 1.75 and it gives all sorts of other um, information in there as well. So could be a condition is actually you're going to monitor it with this but certainly if mine hadn't functioned correctly I would certainly have been back to the installer and said you know what's wrong with this. The SCOP which is seasonal coefficient of performance it very much depends on the weather but what you can do with this is if you say pick a day yeah um so if I want to pick a period now, so so the heat, the external temperature on this time was two degrees, and the flow temperature is thirty two degrees, and the coefficient of performance is three point nine three. So I could directly look up what the heat pump says it'll do under these conditions. Um, so that would be the better way of monitoring its performance: is pick a couple of slots, and say, you know, is is it achieving the for the heat pump for that heat pump because it depends so much on the weather otherwise yeah. and, and also with the with this open monitor system you can actually go and look at other people's heat pumps performing in the similar situation that's right and even go and com compare the same model as your heat pump it's it. performing so yeah. if it's performing drastically worse yeah than somebody else's you can go back so again i'm aiming at somebody who doesn't go and look at the level of knowledge that you've got yeah how they could use this yes and you can you know you've got some in colder environments as one similar heat pump or same heat pump as mine in Fife so you can go in and and is he getting similar performances to you he is yeah mm. I mean it's anonymous data but interesting his room temperatures are lower so that's you know because I'm running it at 19 um, I mean, maybe his room temperature monitor's in a funny place or something, uh, but you can see... But that's helping his performance, isn't it? It's probably it? helping his performance, but yeah, 3.7 degrees, 7, minus 3.7 outside. Um, yeah, so what happens with that? He's probably then using infrared heaters. I don't know. <laughs> He's a tough Scotsman. Right? <laughs> so, yeah, I mean... So that's he, actually helping him with his coefficient of performance. Well, yes, I mean, it, it would it probably, um, yeah, I'm not entirely sure. We'd have to look at it in more detail. It could help him with his flow temperatures, which would then 
help with the coefficient of performance. And the coefficient you know. of performance, a lot of it is the lower the temperature that you need to heat your radiators up and everything else, the higher. That's right. That's probably the single biggest factor is trying to keep the, the flow temperatures low. And that's influenced by good insulation and good size of radiators or heat output devices. So it's almost better to have radiators that are too big for your system yeah. than, to, than to try and go for exactly the right size. And in, in all, yeah, that's right. In all honesty, there isn't such a thing as too big. The, the thing is to have them balanced so that you know, one room doesn't get very hot and another one get cold. But the bigger you can comfortably make your emitters using, say, underfloor heating, the better it is. You, you can then just drop your design temperatures and you can have a more efficient system. But if one room was heating up quicker, the thermostat in that room should trip it. Unless it's in your core area. Yes, unless it's in the core area. So if it were a peripheral room like a bedroom, as you say, you could use a TRV to thermostatic radiator valve to control the temperature. But but really in your living areas, you want you don't want the system turning on and off. No. You want it just running constantly. So balancing the different rooms in your living areas is probably the thing you should aim to do. I, I think yeah. with my own setup, I'll be saying to them, there are certain areas you don't even put a, yeah. a, a, a valve on it to yeah. shut it down. So that that is designed to be open and it'll remain open so without yeah. any adjustments by yeah. members of staff or family yeah um but, but yeah absolutely brilliant